Well, hello and welcome back. Our topic tonight, our first review topic, is on complex numbers. Now, I know this video may seem a little long to you, but I do want you to realize that uh, we spent an entire week doing complex numbers and we're going to do everything that we learned about them in one video. So this is one quick review video, um, maybe not quick in the sense of time, but it does compile everything you need to know about complex numbers. So take your time and come prepared tomorrow. This is your final review for our exam for complex numbers. All right, so let's dive right in and talk about what a complex number is. So go ahead and copy this definition in your notebook there. A complex number is any number that can be written in standard form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers and i is the imaginary unit. So I just want to go through and identify the real number versus the imaginary unit. So example one, four plus two i. And we can just make a little column here, real and imaginary. I would say the real number is 4, and the imaginary unit is going to be our 2i here. And I'm going to just kind of make a note that b equals 2. And again, b is the number with the imaginary unit there. Um, in the next example, the real number is 3. And the imaginary unit, what number would you say is sitting there? Hopefully you're saying b equals negative 1. Example 3. I would say the real number is 16. What would you say your imaginary number is? Do you see one? Of course not. So I would just say b equals 0. There is no imaginary number. And lastly, in part 4, this time I would say I have no real number. I just have an imaginary unit and my b value would be 3. So I just want to recall a plus bi is our imaginary form. A is our real number, B is the imaginary unit, and it's pretty obvious because the imaginary unit is sitting with an I. Alright, now we're going to have to be able to do quite a few operations with imaginary units. We're going to start pretty basic with just adding and subtracting. Now, I'm going to focus on the subtracting part because that's our biggest issue. Um, just as, as young mathematicians here, just subtracting. We just got to be really careful with that negative. So, this is the quantity. 5 plus 8i minus the quantity 2 plus 2i. And I think it's always easier to rewrite it. I always leave my first term, and I say, okay, I know that negative's an issue. I have to make sure I distribute that. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 2 minus 2i. All right, so just be real careful that you take the time to distribute. Now, it's just like adding anything. You know, you add your like terms, put the like terms together. So 5 and a negative 2. Those are like terms. I would say that's a positive 3. And I have a positive 8i and a negative 2i, which makes a positive 6i. And that's it. That's all we're looking for. But our biggest mistake is going to be distributing that negative, so don't let it happen to you. Take the time and rewrite it. So 3 would be my real number, and the 6 there would be on my imaginary unit. All right, pause it. Try the next one on your own. So I've carefully distributed my negative and rewritten it out, and I've just bracketed things that are common. Uh, so 4 plus 12 gets me 16. And then in the blue boxes, I put the i terms together. I've got 10i minus 20i, which gives me negative 10i. And hopefully you have that answer as well. All right, we'll keep chugging here. Now this example is a little different. We have a radical this time. We just have to break our radical down. And again, I think it's very simple. Um, so let me just rewrite the problem. It says subtract this from this. So let's make a little note in our book there that the from comes first. From comes first. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this as 9 plus radical negative 36 minus 8 minus square root of negative 100. All right, so rewrite it. It takes two seconds. All right, now I'm going to break it down first. I know this really says 9 plus. What if that this negative wasn't there? Do you know what the square root of 36 is? Hopefully you do, and I would say that's the number 6. Now, what does that negative under the radical turn into? Well, this is review, so I'm not going to go too far in depth, but we should know that the square root of a negative is a imaginary unit. Okay, notice my parentheses are still there. I'm going to leave my minus sign and rewrite this side. I have 8 minus. Again, if you pretend that negative wasn't there, what's your answer? What's the square root of 100? 10. 
And because that negative's there, I'm going to slap an I on it. All right, now I'm going to clean up one more time and just distribute my negative. So I've got minus 8 and plus 10i. And then again, just box your like terms in. Uh, I would say 9 minus 8 equals a 1. And a 6i plus a 10i gets me a positive 16i. And there you go. All right, one last example in our adding and subtracting. Oh, maybe two. Sorry about that. Um, it says subtract blank from blank. So remember, the keyword is the from comes first. So let's rewrite it. All right, so I've got it rewritten. Can I break radical 5 down? Well, do you know the square root of 5? No. And can you break 5 down? Well, the only multiples are 5 are 5 and 1, so no, I can't break it down. So I'm just going to, like I said, rewrite it and distribute my negative. So I'm going to say this is minus 7 minus 3i radical 5. All right, so remember, we're just looking for like terms. I would say negative 9 and negative 7 are like terms. That gives me a negative 16. And then lastly, I've got 4i radical 5 and negative 3i radical 5. Well, they're like terms. They both have an i radical 5. So I'm just adding the numbers out front. So I would say that's a positive 1i radical 5. Now, do you need the 1 there? Well, of course not. We always know that there's a 1 in front of everything, but I'm just stressing that 4 minus 3 is 1, so I put it there. But again, you don't need it there. Okay. Our, finally, our last adding question is additive inverse. All right. Now, that may be a, a word we haven't seen in a while. We definitely haven't quizzed you on it in a while. Additive inverse is what you add to to get 0. What do you add to to get 0? All right, so if they say 3 plus 4i, what would you add? An additive inverse clearly means add. What am I adding here so that my final answer is 0? I bet you can come up with it. It's pretty easy. What would you add to this real number to make it equal 0? Hopefully you're saying a negative 3. Would you agree 3 and a negative 3 make 0? And what would you add to this imaginary number to make it 0? Well, if it's a positive 4i, I would probably add a negative 4i. And just verify. This and this make 0. This and this make 0. So you've got it. So your additive inverse definition is what you add to to get 0. All right, here comes the big bear for the day. What are the powers of i? And our way we talked about them in class was the cycle of 4. So hopefully that sounds familiar to you. So let me redraw the cycle of 4 out. We have i to the 0. And that cycles down to i to the first, i squared, and that cycles back around to i cubed. So you notice I don't go up to the exponent of 4, I use four numbers, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Those are four numbers, it doesn't actually go to the number 4. Alright, now, I would say two of these should be fairly obvious, the other two you might have to think about. Anything to the 0 power, okay, whether it's 10 to the 0, 1 million to the 0, negative 5 to the 0, i to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay, i to the first. Another easy one, anybody to the first is itself. Again, 10 to the first is 10. Um, e to the first is e. i to the first is i. Anything to the first is itself. Okay, now the other two you have to remember are these guys. i squared, hopefully you recall, is negative 1, and i cubed is negative i. Now, I guess you could use a little trick if you draw your cycle out. The 1 is across from the negative 1. The i is across from the negative i. So if you have these two, then these two are very easy to see. Now, worst case scenario, I believe you can type these into your calculator if you do forget, although it would be smarter to memorize them. Uh, the i button um, off the top of my head, I think it's on the decimal or the, the, the bottom of the calculator. I think you have to go like second decimal and you can type an i in. All right, now at this point, the whole key is that you, and let's get this in our notebook, here's the big deal, you divide by 4, but the big deal is that you use the remainder. All right, so I don't really care how many times it goes in by 4, I want the remainder that I get. So let's go ahead and go through some examples. Um, example 1. We need to find the sum of 5i to the 9th plus i to the 5th. 
Now, we can't just go around adding these because they're not like terms. Okay? These are not like terms, so you can't just add them. So what we have to do is we have to break them down with the powers of i. All right, so off to the side I say, how many times does 9, or 4 go into 9? Okay, so f I'm using this exponent here. 4 goes into 9 twice. I don't care about that. What's my remainder? 4 times 2 is 8. That means I have a remainder of 1. So I'm really going to say this is 5i to the first. Okay, I'm using the remainder. I'm going to do the same thing with the, the fifth exponent here. 5 divided by 4. 4 goes into 5 once. Throw that away. I don't care. What's left over? I would say 1. So this is just i to the first. So 5i to the first plus i to the first. Do you have like terms? Are they the exact same? They both are i to the first. I can now say that is 6i to the first. All right, example two. I think we all saw something similar to this on our test last week. What does it mean to raise something to a power? Well, you can either write it out that number of times, or you can just raise everybody to that power. So I would say 5i cubed all squared is really 5 squared and i cubed squared. All right, I'm raising everybody I see to that power. So I'm going to break it down a little further. 5 squared is 25. And i cubed squared, do we remember that rule for power to a power? Let's make a note there. Power to a power is multiply. So I get 5i to the 6. Now, we're not done there. We just got to break it down with powers of i. So again, 6 divided by 4. How many times does it go in? Once. Throw that number away. What's your remainder? I would say the remainder is 2. So I can say this is really 25i squared. And i squared, use your cycle of 4, i squared is negative 1. Now, I just want to be clear. What operation are we doing there? It was 25 times i squared, so it's 25 times negative 1. So I get a final answer of negative 25. All right, a couple quick more here. Uh, why don't you pause 3, try it on your own, and see if we get the same answer. All right, so I've rewritten mine out. I divided each by 4 and used the remainder. Um, i to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1. i squared is negative 1. i to the 0 is 1. I squared is negative 1, but notice there already is a negative here, so that's going to make it a positive 1. So I have 1 minus 1, which is a wash, and 1 plus 1, which is a total of 2. All right, find the product of i to the 8th times 2i squared times 4i to the 10th. Now, there's two ways to go about this one. When you're multiplying, you don't need like terms. You literally just multiply. So I'm going to say that this is uh, 4 times 2 is 8. I. And when you multiply, what do you do with exponents? Well, remember, you add them. So I get 4i to the 20th. Now, I just want you to compare. You could not do that here. The rule for adding exponents is only when you're multiplying. We weren't multiplying here. That's why we had to break those down. But back here, I am multiplying, so I can simply add those exponents. Now, I can just easily divide by 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5 with a remainder of 0. So I get 8i to the 0. And i to the 0, of course, is 1 for a final answer of 8. Now, if you really wanted to break each of these down, of course, that's fair game, and then multiply. Uh, but again, the shortcut was you're multiplying, add the exponents. All right, moving on to multiplying and dividing. So I want to make sure that we're all on the same page here and that we still have to rationalize the denominator. Okay, all that means is we can't leave irrational numbers on the bottom. Remember, we can't leave a radical on the bottom, and we can't leave an imaginary unit on the bottom. So what did we do? We just simply multiply by the conjugate. All right, and be familiar with that word conjugate. Multiply by the conjugate. So looking at my first example here, um, I notice I have an i on the bottom, which I can't leave. We have to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate. What is the conjugate of 6 minus 3i? Hopefully you've said it at home. It should be 6 plus 3i. And whatever you do to the bottom, remember you do to the top. Now, on top, very straightforward, I'm just going to distribute. So my numerator is just 6 plus 3i. On the bottom, however, you have to use what word? 
you have a binomial times a binomial, so you have to FOIL. So 6 times 6 is 36, plus 18i minus 18i. Um, positive times a negative is going to be a negative 9i squared. Remember, i times i is i squared, just like x times x is x squared. Now, if you're quick, you'll remember that when you multiply by a conjugate, those middle terms are always going to cancel. So that's one little trick we can use. So I'm just going to clean up. On top, I have 6 plus 3i. On the bottom, I have 36 minus 9i squared. All right, so talk yourself through it. i squared is really negative 1. What operation are you doing between those two? They're sitting right next to each other. Hopefully, you're saying multiply. So I would say plus 10. So I've got 6 plus 3i all over 46. Now, let's talk about that canceling rule. You can only cancel if everybody is divisible by a certain number. Does everybody have a number they go into? And I hope your answer is no. So this is not possible to simplify. You are done at this point. Just remember, in math, we want to balance things. If you can't do it to every term, then it's not a legal move. All right. Number two, very similar idea. Pause it, try it on your own, see if we get the same answer. So we can compare there. Hopefully our foiling matches up. Just watch those plus and minus signs. Any positive times a negative should be a negative. Um, on top, this i squared turns into a negative 1. So I have 35 plus 12i. On the bottom, because it was a conjugate, those terms cancel. This turns into a negative 1, but watch that it already is negative, so it actually now turns into a plus, plus 1, so I get a 37. Is every term divisible by the same number? Again, my answer is no, so I think I'm done there. Um, just in case you see this on the exam, I just want to remind you that you can divide each term by 37. They could write this 35 over 37 plus 12i over 37, and I think that makes sense to you. I'm just dividing each term. I could go back and do the same thing for this first one. I could say 6 over 46 plus 3i over 46. And again, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just dividing each term by 46. They're just equivalent. All right, example 3. What does it mean to square something? Some of us have this idea that we're just going to go around and square each of those numbers. Now, we did something similar in the previous example, if, or on the previous slide there. If I said 5i squared, I would agree. You could square the 5 and you can square the i. But that's very, very different from what this question is saying. What do you notice is the big difference there? Hopefully, you're saying that plus sign. And that plus sign is telling you that it's a binomial and you have to write it twice. So this is not legal in this case. You have to say... 2 plus 5i times 2 plus 5i. You have to write it twice when you have that plus or minus sign there. It's a binomial, not a monomial. So just a quick FOIL, and we've got our answer. So it's a 4 plus 10i plus 10i plus 25i squared. Uh, that makes 20i. This turns into a negative 1, which makes this term a negative 25. Uh, plus 4 gets me a negative 21. And there we have it. We're done. Last one in this section. Um, I think you can, you can try it on your own again. Notice you don't have a, a binomial on the bottom, just a single monomial. So I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by i. And again, I'm doing it to the bottom because that's where I cannot leave the i. So pause it, see what you get. Hopefully your fraction looks like that. And again, I'm going to say this turns into a negative 1, which gets me 3i uh, plus 5 on top. And this turns into a negative 1, so I'm going to say divided by negative 1. Now, a couple of us did this on our, our test or quiz last week. We really, or maybe it was our spiral, we really don't want to leave a negative 1 on the bottom. And it's very simple. Just divide everybody or multiply everybody by a negative 1. So I would really say this is equivalent to negative 3i minus 5. And what did I do again? I just multiplied everybody on the top and bottom by a negative 1. Our final little section is on graphing complex numbers. I just want to recall, you graph with a vector. And you talked about vectors in geometry, and we already obviously talked about them several times this year. A vector has a nice dot on one end and an arrow on the other. Um, so you graph with a vector. 
you start at the origin. And we'll draw our axes real quick. The x-axis is equivalent to your real axis. And your y-axis is your imaginary axis. Alright, so x is the real, y is the imaginary. Alright, we'll graph all three of these on the same axis. So again, this is your real and this is your imaginary axis. So if you just ask yourself what's real and what's imaginary, it's pretty straightforward. So 3 minus 2i, real, imaginary. So I'm going to go 3 on the real, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to go negative 2 on the imaginary, and I'm going to plot that point. Okay, so there's my point. Now the rule said we start at the origin, and we draw a vector out to that point. So just make sure your arrowhead does not go beyond that point. And there you have it. That is 3 minus 2i. All right, let's try 4i. What is my real number and what's my imaginary number? Well, do you see a real number? I would say no, so my real number is 0 and my imaginary number is 4. So I'm going to go 0 on the real, which means I'm not moving on this axis, and then I'm just going to go 4 on the imaginary. Plot my point, and again, vector from the origin to that point. Don't let that arrowhead go beyond that. And lastly, uh, negative 3 minus 6i. I would say negative 3 is my real, and negative 6 is my imaginary. So negative 3 on the real, negative 6 on the imaginary, plot your point, vector from the origin. All right, uh, let's get one more graphical example. And they usually always have you add or subtract something. So it says graphically subtract this from this. So what should be going through your head? You should be saying from comes first. Okay, get those F's together. From comes first. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 plus 2i, and it says subtract negative 1 plus i. All right, so I know it says graphically, but we're going to get it written out on paper first. Make sure you just pause for two moments, take that negative, and distribute. So I get plus 1 minus i, which gets me a total. I'll just kind of make my like terms. Uh, so that's 4, 2i minus i is plus i. All right, so now when it says graphically subtract them, I just want to be clear that we want to show all three. Okay, we want to show the original two and our answer. So this will only take a few seconds. Let's get our axes graphed. All right, so the first one is 3 plus 2i. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 3 plus 2i. Then we want to go negative 1 plus i, negative 1 plus i. And lastly, we'll graph our answer, which was 4 uh, plus i. And there you have it. We have graphically subtracted our imaginary numbers. Well, that's all I've got for you tonight. Hopefully, you're feeling pretty confident in your imaginary numbers, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.